With Alder Lake, Gigabyte released a shitload of motherboards. They decided to do a lot of those boards in both DDR4 and DDR5 version, and then split them between the Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi versions. And also, I guess on some markets, they also released the AC and the AX versions as different products. So not every motherboard on the website has actually been released in the European market, I guess at least Italy. And this motherboard was not in the initial list. So when I did my first video about Alder Lake, it was about six months ago, uh, we did a quick comparison of different brands and not focusing only on Gigabyte. And then we did some more testing specifically on Gigabyte because that's the brand we use for our Hackintosh, as they are the 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 one that actually support Thunderbolt the best. They all these motherboards have the Thunderbolt header for the uh, Titan Ridge and Ma Maple Ridge adding cards. They're located in different positions, but here they are. And so that's why we focused on Gigabyte. And this motherboard, the one in the center, was not available with the first launch. While the B66 S3H AX DDR4 was not only the cheapest, but also one of the best performing in terms of VRM uh, power consumption. So what we did in testing and what we're gonna do today is to compare the power consumption from the wall using the same CPU, like the same exact one without uh, any additional tuning before any additional tweaking. And then we will try to see if there's any difference in stability when we undervolt them because uh, Alder Lake has a very weird uh, behavior when undervolting. It will start to perform better and then degrade performance after a certain th threshold. And it's not very clear uh, how Intel decides that, how Intel did set this and how much of the motherboard vendor have to do about that. So let's see. The DS3H is a full-size motherboard. It has no VRM heatsink on the top. It has a lot of PCI X16 physical slots, but they're all wired 1X. And that's uh, probably the, the weakest point about this board, because in my test, the power consumption was actually one of the lowest between B660 and Z690. And it was performing like much better than ASRock budget boards, of course, but also better than ASUS motherboards over the same budget and it was actually coming out as the cheapest and the one that had motherboard thunderbolt header so that was like my, my go-to motherboard except for the fact of the, the 1x connections that it could like prevent from future upgrades that could be an issue for future expansion slots so i was not 100 percent satisfied with this also this motherboard came with a uh, mediatek and uh, wireless card, which is not compatible with macOS in any form, and is also quite crappy on Windows. The Z690 Gaming X DDR4 is more of a premium uh, motherboard, like low tire premium motherboard, because they also have like the UD, which is like the super lowest tire Z690, and that is like very, very awful looking also. This one looks very premium, has all the features of the, of the Z690 Gigabyte lineup, has like four NVMe slots. It has uh, no Wi-Fi, sadly. That's the main issue with this. We, I have to buy a separate adding card for Wi-Fi, even for like lowest mm, dual antenna cards. I have to put another card, so it basically negates one of those three slots, making it basically equal to this one. And the motherboard also comes as I stated with a Thunderbolt header and like full size heat sinks. While this new addition, the B660M, is well built, high quality, has a VRM heatsink on top also, and a massive heatsink on the back. It has only two PCIe Flash slots, but this one is wider 4X. The Wi Fi is inside the motherboard. The interesting point about this is going to be the power consumption, because that's, that's where this motherboard actually uses more power when using the i5 than this one. So the higher tire Zenith 690 was using uh, about 10 watts more using the i5-12600 uh, 
than the cheapest B660 on the comparison roundup. So that was quite que quite weird. This one was performing like a tiny worse, tiny little bit worse than the best Z690 M from Asus, which was the best in the power consumption category. But then it was losing in uh, like the tunable support, so I didn't use those bar those boards at all. I just got the results and said, yeah, I cannot use that motherboard for hacking touch because the Thunderbolt support is not present. Like, there's maybe an error, but it's just for Asus cards, and Asus cards don't play well with hacking touch. So, this motherboard could like end up being a very very good deal. It's only 150, 160 euros, so it's like 40 euros less than the Z690 and 30 euros more than the B660 DS3H. And you get a much better heatsink, you get like a, a proper 4X slot, which is probably more useful than having four 1X slots. And we will see about the power consumption. Um, the CPU is the i5-12600. It's not exactly the same CPU that I used in the other previous tests. So I'm not sure if the results are gonna be 100% compatible because of the silicon quality but it shouldn't be much of a difference and that's why I'm also testing the Z690 again. So XMP was set and those slight changes have been made. The RAM is running at 3200. And we are at about 160. It started at 165 and it's now dropping. So we got to a peak of 177. I guess it will start to throttle now. We're almost at the end. Yeah, it started to drop, 165 now, and let's see the score. What? 12,600. Okay, the cheapest B660. Let's start. Power consumption starts at around... Oh, 174, so yeah, it's, it's, it's higher. 182. Let's see what the score is gonna be. Dropped just like on the other board, and we got higher score. That's that's weird. So I would say that this board is doing better in the end. I would I was not expecting this to happen. Z690 time. Let's get ready and start. And we have very weird behavior. It's ramping up in a weird way. And it's stopping at 120. That sounds very strange. Something has to be wrong here. And that's why this original release BIOS was not set for the i5. So it was applying a much lower voltage. And thus, uh, I got a very low score, like 5000 R R23. So it's now time to update the BIOS with our trusty, rusty USB. Testing the Z690 with the updated BIOS. Let's see. And now we see a result that is in line with the other boards. So. Again, this motherboard doesn't have Wi-Fi, so it has like less functionality than the B660, than this one. It's pulling more power, just as with the previous test that I did. It's probably gonna overheat for sure, and let's see the results. Probably throttling. Well. You get the same score. So yeah, we're basically in line with the B660 board. Interesting. Okay, we got to 180, 183. And we disabled the onboard LEDs. Let's see if the results get better a little bit. Yeah, so we got the IS score. Now looking for the threshold for the performance decrease because of clock stretching. That's what happens with the other leg. What happens is that if you undervolt too much, the scores start to get lower. Okay, with the undervolting of minus 0 0.020, 
we got a very very tiny reduction in power consumption but I'm expecting an, a slightly better result yeah oh we got a slightly yeah, maybe 20 points more so nothing worth it but we didn't get any drop so new test I've been using this bronze power supply it's like a bare minimum spec power supply I will now switch to this fanless prime platinum 450 watts power supply and see how much the results will change running again at minus 20 millivolt XMP now with the platinum power supply and yeah we dropped mm, about 10 watts I would say yeah that's 10 watts less so nothing really mind-blowing here and as expected the score is the same 13,400 with the prime and we dropped about 10 watts during the test time to test 45 millivolt offset at 165 watts we probably got the bottom and yeah here it is we actually got a slightly not very noticeable drop in both power consumption and performance so I am back with the Gaming X B660M and I will try to set the same offset voltage that was getting the best result on the Z690 and I also figured out that this, this uh, motherboard is not stable at 3200 for some reason only 3000 is, is running fine at the moment very weird uh, something seems very off with the B660M Gaming X because we set minus 2500 volt and the power consumption dropped a lot and that means that probably the score is gonna be awful running minus 10 millivolts on the B660M and we still see a very huge drop in power consumption just as expected we're still dropping performance so the B660M cannot take any other volt and that is the same exact chip that was in the Z690 before and it's still a gigabyte board so there's something different about the voltage regulation and something in the bias in, on, those, on those boards now remember that this board was getting the lowest score but also slightly lower power consumption than the previous boards actually than the B660, the S3H and the Z690M so maybe what happens is that this board is actually under volting by default and you can do this and maybe we will get back the performance that we were missing and also the power consumption that we were actually expecting from the stock voltage configuration okay so power consumption is still slightly like a tiny bit lower than the other boards at stock settings and we are plus 10 now so I guess we should now expect to get the proper 13,000 400 points that's my guess let's see oh yeah we are so we found it that's the reason so this board is actually under voting by default and that's why we're getting lower scores and that's why we're getting lower power consumption and yeah that's amazing that's something that I was not expecting to get with this full day of testing but that explains everything and I'm very happy about that so in the end it seems that they they all share the same power consumption the same performance ratio this one just has a much better looking VRM section and a better PCI Express layout maybe it's, a, it's an M80X uh, but it's still more expensive so you can take this slap a heatsink up there and put a fan on top and you save money in the end just for the little hassle of doing that the trade-off is just with this one you get more PCI Express 1X and uglier, an uglier board and this one you get a better board the only thing that remains now is to explain the DDR issue with the 3000 MHz memory so I'm gonna test this other kit it's the only one that I have ready that is rated 3600 and see what happens
okay, with this RAM, I can get 3400 MHz and I can finally get the proper scores for Geekbench. I was also getting lower Geekbench scores for some reason, and now I understand why. You can see the difference is pretty dramatic. The RAM is working in Gimo 1. I didn't get any hardware error, which means that I might get 3500 working on this kit. Remember that the i5 locked CPUs have a locked system agent. That means that you can usually run around 3500 MHz memory clock, depending on the temperature also. So the higher the temperature, the lower the memory clock is, the lower the stable memory you can get. And yeah, very interesting. There is another step for our little i5, and that's the Noctua. Let's put some thermal pads inside to improve thermal conductivity on the back. And with the final CPU cooler installed, and the final memory kit installed, I'll start to do some memory tuning. And now that the machine is finally inside the case, and it's all ready to, to go, I can tell you that cooling this i5 is extremely difficult because the die size is probably too tiny and so you get quite a lot of noise even from an Octua. Uh, I tried to repaste it twice and uh, no luck. I, I used the, the contact fix like those contact frame fixes and everything. I tried to adjust the screws different pressure but it just doesn't want it to stay cool without like I mean it's, it's this noise and it's like it's not it's not even it's not like it doesn't make that much of a difference actually like you can run the fans very loud but just like it's now it's doing now but the problem is probably inside the the package the thermal interface inside of the package